All righty. Good morning. Good Sunday morning. Thank you so much for tuning in with us here at North Greensburg Church of God. Thank you so much. We appreciate you stopping by and taking time out of your busy day to listen to uh, our service today. And thank God that he woke us up this morning, got us out of bed, although some people didn't want to get out of bed. But yet, he just done it. And we just thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, God, for just being with us this day. Hey, some people may be watching the live stream in bed. In bed. I've heard people say they've been doing that, too. So uh, if you're watching us in bed, hey, that's fine, too. We, pre we just appreciate you tuning in. Uh, if you'd like to bless the church financially, there are three ways you can do that. Uh, you can mail that to, of course, North Greensboro Church of God. 3605 Summit Avenue, that's S-U-M-M-I-T, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27405. Also, you could bring it by in person. That is the church as well as the parsonage address. Uh, you could bring it by there. Or you can also use our cash app, which is the dollar sign, all capital letters, N-G-C-O-G. Uh, and it would be greatly appreciated if you feel led by the Lord to bless financially uh, to our church. I stand amazed at how God took care of us in the year two, or 2020, uh, not having that many services throughout the year. But God still met our needs. Amen, Brother Coble? Amen. And it was amazing to look back at that year and see how quickly it went by. But not only that, but how, how God just truly blessed. Uh, the bills did not go unpaid. Um, and it was just awesome. But thank you again so much for tuning in. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, uh, and then we'll sing, and Sister Jenna's going to sing, and then uh, Brother Coble will bring to us the Word of God. He has a wonderful title. I'm going to let him spoil the title on you, uh, but when he told me the title of it this week, I was like, wow. So I can't wait to hear this message. Dr. Coble, it's going to be awesome. All righty. Thank you so much again for being with us today. Thank you, TikTokers. God bless y'all for tuning in as well. We love you guys, and we're praying for you. Facebook, we love you too. Uh, we got two live streams going on right now, TikTok and Facebook. So praise God, Brother Coble. Amen. We get the word out. Amen. Ever how we can. Amen. Back in my day, back in, yeah, I got people on the phone. Back in my day, I, I used to pretend like I was a radio DJ, and I'd be going out to radio land, but be nobody there but my cassette player. But now it's like, man, the media, you got all the media stuff going on. But anyway, nevertheless, God bless you all for listening. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, we do have an update on Sister Kathy Brooks' cousin there in Virginia. Uh, he and his wife both seem to be doing better. Uh, so we are grateful for that. Praise God for that good report this morning. Um, just several different prayer needs as, as you can scroll through. Anybody that's got social media can scroll through social media and see so many requests, people hurting, uh, and people just need prayer. So let's remember each other in prayer. Amen. You got anything else, Brother Coble? Let's continue to lift our church up in prayer. I'm excited about going back in person next Sunday morning. Yes, next Sunday morning in person. We'll be right here. Service will begin at 11, but we're going to start playing a little Sunday school video about 1040. So if you want to make plans to be here about 1030 uh, next Sunday morning, uh, that'll be great. We'll be excited to see everybody. Amen. Or those that can uh, come and those that feel uh, free to come out. But, um, every, of course, all, all the restrictions are still on, masks and all that good stuff. No hugging, no shaking hands or you know, fist bump everybody or, or elbow bump or whatever. But anyway, nevertheless, it'll still be good to see people. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for another day, God, that you've blessed us to live. Thank you, God, for the health and the strength, God, to get up this morning and, Lord, start our day. And, God, we thank you for that, Father. And, Lord, we thank you, God, for this good report, God, of uh, Brother and Sister Shoot there uh, in Virginia. Father God, we pray, God, you continue to touch them. Uh, God, bring them through this sickness, Father God. And, uh, Lord, continue just to touch them, Father God. And, Lord, we, we pray, Father God, that you would touch our church, God. Continue, Lord, to bless. Uh, God, financially, Lord, spiritually, God, in every area, God, continue to bless our church, God. And we'll thank you, Lord, for that. 
God, we pray that you bless our service today. God, touch and anoint us, God, as we sing. And God, as we worship you today in spirit and in truth, God, then, Lord, touch our pastor, God, as he shares with us, Lord, from the word of God. Lord, speak to our hearts, God, today. And Lord, we'll thank you and praise you, God, for all things, Lord. In Jesus' name, God, amen. All right, Noah, you helping me pray this morning, man. I hear you, buddy. That's awesome. Y'all like hearing Noah praise the Lord? Amen. Well, we do too. Amen. All right. Help us sing, everybody. We'll be happy over there. Amen. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow, amen, no matter what. Because he lives, we can face whatever we have to face, amen. Uncertain days. 
he lives. Amen. He is not dead. And I, I remember just as I heard Sister Jenna talking a few minutes ago there to her TikTok family that was on that, hey, our God is not dead. Amen. He is up there in heaven. He's wide awake. There's nothing bothering him. And how easy it is for us in this old fleshly body to let things bother us, to let people get on our nerves or let things get on our nerves. But you know, God and Jesus never like that. Amen. Jesus is right there at the right hand of God. Intercession for me and you. And, and hey, all we got to do is just live this life. And I like what I heard one preacher I was listening to this morning saying, let's carry the name of Christian and let's be very proud of being a Christian. Amen. Amen. All righty. Sister Jenny, you come on and, and praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord.
some praise. Father, we just praise you, God. We thank you, Lord, for your grace yes, and your Lord. mercy yes, today, and we just lift you up, Father. We give you glory, Lord, and we yes, thank you, Lord. God, for this opportunity we have to come and worship you this morning, God. Yes, we ask, Lord, that you would have your way in the name of Jesus. Yes, just mean every need today. For that, God, will praise you and give you glory in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift you up. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. I want to just thank the Lord this morning for this opportunity to be behind the pulpit. And this evening you will have at 5 o'clock an online service to tune in to. But tonight I'm going to be in Lenore at the North Lenore Church of God speaking for Pastor Chris Boyd. I'm going to be doing one of my end time studies. I'm going to talk about the neglected signs of the last days. And Hebrews chapter 2 tells us, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Which was first given, which was first said of the Lord, confirmed by, by the word. So we're going to look at that this evening there. But this evening, when you tune in online on Facebook, North Greensboro page for our evening service, I'm going to be speaking on this evening Christian's attitude and the attitude of a Christian. And so we want you to tune in for that at five. But this morning I've got a word burning on my heart that I believe is not just for North Greensboro Church of God, but for the body of Christ as a whole. If you have your Bibles, let's go to the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. Let me just say, I have felt the Holy Ghost all morning from praying before service at the house and my at, at my desk in my home study to to fill in the Lord there to fill in the Lord here through the singing this morning I just believe God is with us and I believe he can touch us in a mighty way I want to thank those that are watching online this morning in both avenues I want to thank those listening by the phone and those that are here this morning I want to thank you for being here Amen. Deuteronomy Amen. chapter 1 Hallelujah. The word of the Lord says the following. On this side of Jordan, in the land of Moab, began Moses to declare this law, saying, The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, You have dwelt long enough in this mount. Turn you and take your journey and go to the mount of the Amorites and to the all the high, all to all the places nigh there unto, in the plain, in the hills, and in the vale, and in the south, and by the seaside, to the land of the Canaanites, and unto Lebanon, and unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land, which the Lord swear unto your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. This morning I've got a unique title, as Sister Coble has said. I'm going to preach this morning on the ruts, the butts, and the guts. The ruts, the butts, and the guts. Father, we love you and we just give you praise and glory. We ask God that you would touch us. We pray, Lord, you would anoint us today. Give us strength, Lord. And I ask God that you would touch us in a mighty way. Let us leave here different than the way we came in the name of Jesus. Yes, and for that, God will give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Israel had come, become accustomed to walking around in circles for years. God had led them around the wilderness. And so that was all they knew. And that's all they become content to stay within the safety of their mountains. 
When it was time, God broke into their way of routine and told them, you have been here long enough. It is time for you to move on. You see, this became a rut unto them, going round and round each day. Basically, they were getting in the ruts. Then in Deuteronomy 2, 3, we read, You have compassed this mountain long enough, turn ye northward. Long enough and turning northward suggests that they began to encamp there and stay there. In other words, they sat on their butts and did nothing. Uh -oh. Then we get to Joshua chapter 1 through 6 and we learn that Moses died and now Joshua was in charge. And God speaks to Joshua in Joshua 1 through 5 and says, Now after the death of Moses... The servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto a land which I give unto them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness of the, in this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. So this is where we understand that the children of Israel had the guts to go possess the land with Joshua. We read in Joshua 6 that the walls fell down in Jericho when they obeyed God. As I was praying this week, this is what the Lord said to me as it relates where we are right now. The church, the body of Christ today, many are in the ruts. The people are sitting on their butts. And God is wanting the body of Christ to have the guts to work for Him in this last day. What do you mean by this? Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 says, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all members of that one body being one, are one body, so also is Christ. What is happening in this last day and in this last year particularly, do you realize that we're, we're now past the one year mark of this COVID-19 stuff going on? And what's happening is the church is going round and round. Right. A pastor once said the following, open, shut, open, shut, open, shut. If you tell people to wear masks, they say you live in fear. If you tell people not to wear masks, they say you don't care. If, they, if you do not visit people because of the pandemic, they say you don't care. If, they, if you call folks, they say you're scared and don't care to come see me in person. If you handle things more than your load, you're doing too much. If you just obey God and do what you're supposed to do, then you're a lazy preacher. So what is one to do? Also keep in mind, before the pandemic in most churches, 20% of the people were doing 80% of the work. In some settings now, it seems the pastor is doing 90% of the work. Why 90% are just taking it easy? The church has gone from the ruts to the butts. They're sitting around doing nothing for God. God is looking for people this morning with the guts. To do what he has called us to do. So let's look at this this morning. And see how this story in the Old Testament relates to the church of today. We must get rid first of all of the ruts. Or our routines. One of the deadliest enemies to the body of Christ today. Is to that of getting in a routine or getting in a rut or just going through the motions. We read in Deuteronomy chapter 1. Verse, verse um, 6, The Lord our God spake unto Hor us in Horeb, saying, You have dwelt long, en long enough in this mount. The mountain where they were going around in circles at Horeb, there was a it was a place called Kadesh Barnea. This represented so much to them. First of all, 
It meant a crisis. They were going in the wilderness and they needed food and different provisions from God. In Exodus 16, 15, And when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, It is manna, for they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. In Numbers 20, 11, And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, and water came out abundantly in the congregation. And the congregation drank in their beasts also. It's amazing to me that if even though we may get in a rut and a routine, God has it. Right. Amen. Yes. Amen. It's amazing to me how when we get so much in the routine, sometimes God still meets the need. Right. And God still takes care of His people. Hallelujah. I want you to know something this evening. If He has to rain down from manna, He will. Uh -huh. From heaven, He will. If He has to just get water from a rock, He will. Uh -huh. God will take care of the needs of His people. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It also meant a place of consequences and bad decisions. We know the story. The twelve spies go and spy out the land and only Joshua and Caleb have a good report according to Numbers 13 and 14. It meant also that they often sinned against God and not trusting His plan, which is the reason why they wandered around there in the first place. And I'm here to tell you this morning, if you don't trust God, if you don't flow under God's plan and purpose for your life, it's going to become your relationship with God will become a routine very quickly. Right, right, yes, it can. Amen. What is your Barnea this morning? The word Kardesh Barnea means in Hebrew an inconsistent son. What's causing your inconsistent walk with God this morning that's made your experience become a rut or a routine? Is it unanswered prayer? Well, maybe you just need to think about the motives of your prayers. James 4, 1 through 3 says, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even the, of your lust that war in your members? You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot attain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask and miss it. You may consume it upon your own lust. You need to make sure your prayers are in line with the will of God. If you want your prayers answered this morning. You can't have answered prayer if there's sin in your heart today. David said in Psalm 66, 18, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. We read in 1 John 5, 14 and 15, And this is the confidence we have in Him. If we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions desired of Him. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Is it unconfessed sin that's causing the routine in your life? 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Right. Right. 1 John 2, 1, My little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Is it sickness or is he still the healer? Isaiah 53, 5 says, But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. He's still the healer this morning. Glory to God. And He can heal your body. He can touch your mind. He can save you from that sin that's in your life. He can redeem you by love divine. Hallelujah. If you will just put your trust in Him today. Glory to God. Acts 10 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with Him. I don't know about you this morning. We need to trust the Lord. Right. It's time to get out of the routine and rediscover our relationship with God. It reminds me of the passage found in Psalm 85, 1 through 6. The Lord, Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thy self 
from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thy anger to, toward us to cease. Will thou be angry for, with us forever? Will thou draw out thine anger against unto all generations? Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Hallelujah. We must get rid of the ruts this morning and get revived in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise wherever you're at today. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Lord this morning in this house. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Secondly, this morning, I don't mean to sound sound profane, but we need to get off our butts. Right. Deuteronomy 2 3 says, You have cast this mountain long enough, turn you northward. What happened here in Deuteronomy 2 was they decided to sit there and stay in one place when God was saying to go forward. You fast forward to Joshua 1, and Joshua gets the call to lead the people. But notice verse 2 here. He says, My Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all this people. Thou and all this people. God was telling these folks to get up and do something for him. It reminds me of a song by Matthew West. It says, I woke up this morning, saw a world full of trouble. Now, I thought, how would we ever get so far down? How is it ever going to turn around? So I turned my eyes to heaven. I thought, God, why don't you do something? Well, I just could not bear the thought of people living in poverty. Children sold into slavery. The thought disgusted me, so I shook my fist at heaven and said, God, why don't you do something? He said, I did. I created you. If not us, then who? If not me and you. Right now, it's time for us to do something. And I'm here to tell you it's time to do something for God. Amen. If it's singing, you need to be singing. If it's preaching, you need to be preaching. If it's teaching, you need to be teaching. I'm here to tell you something, folks. We may be in a different time and era right now, but God has not changed. And the calling and the anointing of God on our lives has not changed. We need to keep doing something for God today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Got a dear friend that I spoke to earlier this week. I won't say who it is. I have a lot of confidence in this man. He's a friend. He's a leader. He is someone that I know goes by what the Lord tells him. And he was straight up with me. He said, Brother Bill, you're doing too much. You're doing what what people in the church should be doing. And reading these scriptures and praying this week and preparing this message, I agree with them. Because, you see, I have realized my purpose as pastor of this church is to equip the saints of God to do the work. According to Ephesians 4. When you get to Acts chapter 6, there's a conflict that rises up about how the widows were neglected and they wanted the apostles to go take care of it. But they said they were going to appoint people over it and they were going to give themselves to prayer and ministry of the Word. When God spoke to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, He didn't say, Joshua, go. He said, you and the people, go. And I think too many times we lean on the ministers of the gospel to do everything for us. I'm glad I'm preaching in front of a camera this morning instead of doing in person, group. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> but it's the truth. 
God never intended His church to be a one-man show. We are to be a team. Ephesians 2, 21 and 22 says, In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also building together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Ephesians 4, 16, From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Hebrews 10, 25, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the matter of what some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. I don't care if it's in person, online, on the phone, or CD. Get in church. Amen. Hear the word of God. Do something for God in this last day. Get up. <laughs> Thirdly, we must have the guts. We get to Joshua 6, and it's time for them to go from the ruts to getting up from their butts and having the guts to take the promised land. Joshua 6, 20 says, So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. God is looking for a people with guts to do what they've been called to do. God's looking for someone to be like Isaiah. In Isaiah 58, verse 1, it says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift thy voice up like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression in the house of Jacob their sins. God's looking for someone to be like Paul in this last day who said in Romans 1, 16, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God and the salvation of everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also the Greek. I'm here to tell you we don't need to water down God's word. We don't need to water down God's testimony in our lives. Amen. I remember in high school how I was bullied, how even a satanic group in, in high school tried to put a spell on me because I would not be silent. And I'm here to tell you I'm 46 years old now. That was back in 19. 1993, and I'm still not silent. Jesus is still the only way to heaven. It's not Buddha, Muhammad, Allah, or whoever. It's Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. I'm still not silent. They call me Holy Roller on the school bus. They call me Holy Roller at, even at church. But I will not stay silent. I still believe the power of the Holy Ghost is just as real today as it was on the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. They say, well, don't try to encourage people with the false hope of the rapture. Well, I'm here to tell you, folks, just because we're in COVID-19 does not change the fact that Jesus Christ is coming back to this earth again. Hallelujah. I will not not stand silent. I will not bow down. I will not compromise what the Lord has done in my life. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We need to live our life like Peter in 1 Peter 2 9 when he says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That you should so forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Uh -huh. They get there and they see the walls. These walls were well defended. Jewish culture records that they even had bowling oil waiting for the children of Israel if they tried to attack. Our decision must be that we are going to look at the walls of our life, that we're going to look at the walls of our lives and not give up. We're going to keep fighting. We're going to do what God said and we're going to get victory. Yes, yes. We need to realize this morning, according to Romans 8, 31, what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? First right. John 4, 4, year of God, little children overcome him because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. I submit to you this morning, God is looking for someone with the guts to trust him. Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Right. 
James 2.20, but will thou, O vain man, faith without works is dead? James 2.26, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. I'm living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in his great love. From all harm, I'm, all harm I'm saved in the sheltering arms. I'm living by faith, and I feel no alarm this morning. Hallelujah. In closing this morning, television interviewer and journalist Larry King describes three farmers who gathered daily in a field during a horrible drought. These men are down on their knees, looking upward and praying the skies will open and put, pour forth a much needed rain. Unfortunately, the heavens are silent and the petitioners become discouraged because they continue, but they continue to meet every morning and lift their requests to God. One morning, an uninvited stranger approached and asked the men what they're doing. They said, we're praying for rain. The newcomer looks at each of them and shakes his head. No, I don't think so. No, you're not really truly seeking God. The first farmer says, of course we're praying. We're down on our knees pleading for rain. Look around, see the drought. We haven't had rain in more than a year. My goodness, I just felt the Holy Ghost. We haven't seen God really move in his churches in over a year. We've seen God move, but not like he wants to move. The outsider continues to nod his head and he advises them their efforts will not work. The second farmer jumps in and says, we need the rain. We aren't asking for all ourselves, but for our families and livestock. The man listens, nods, and is still not impressed and says, you're wasting your time because you're not truly expecting God to bring the rain. The third farmer can't take it anymore in anger. He says, okay, what do we? What would you do if you were in our shoes? He says, do you really want to know? They said, we really want to know. He says, I would have brought the umbrella. Oh, wow. Let me tell you something this morning. Whether you watch services online, whether you listen by the phone, whether you come in person, whatever you do, bring the umbrella. Amen. Let God's rain fall in your life today. Let God's touch touch you today wherever you may be at. And I'm here to tell you something, folks. I want God to touch me. I want God to touch me. I want to be filled with the river of the Spirit of God. I want the rain of God to fall on my life. Amen. Hallelujah. But you see, none of us can do it alone. It takes all of us working together. And with a determination to get out of the ruts, get off our butts, and have the guts to do something for God amen. in this last day. Yes, amen. I pray that people were touched somehow by this word this morning. Let's pray together. Father, God, we have one of three, pe three types of people today that are listening. Either in person, online, or on the phone. Or will listen to the CD, or will listen to the replay. We have people that have been stuck in the ruts in the routine. Yes, this last year, this pandemic has, has got so many in a routine. Then you've got those that are just sitting around and doing nothing. Then you've got those, Lord, that want to do something for you. Wherever the category is for the person, I pray that they would go to a new level today with you. I pray you would touch them today in the name of Jesus. I pray today in Jesus' name that God, you would also save the ones that are watching that are lost. Lord, let them come, call out to you in repentance and ask you into their heart to be Lord of their life. Lord, I pray, God, that, Lord, you would move in a mighty way. I just thank you, Lord, for this message and this word today. Yes. And I thank you, God, for everyone that's called in or tuned in or, or however they listen to this service. I pray that, God, you would just bless them today and meet every need. Yes. Continue to supply the needs of this local church, God. Yes. Continue to supply the needs of your people, Lord. And, God, let us do something for you in this last day before your soon return. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you got something out of this message this evening. Don't forget to tune back in at 5 this evening online. And then Wednesday night, we'll be having online and conference call available. 
And I want to encourage you to call in or tune in Wednesday night for the Wednesday evening service. Next Sunday evening at 6 p.m., our district overseer, Brother Ted Burke, has invited all the Church of Gods on the Greensboro District to come over to Merritt Drive for our, for our district service. This will be the first district service we've had in a year and a half. And Dr. Han Yang will be with us for that service. So we wanted to make you aware of that and everything. And so we are just very grateful for you. We are praying this week for Danny Duncan. We drew his name today. And also, this starts the second week of Seek God for the City. And we're seeking God for an awakening of people, for of their heart. It says, this week we will pray for those of our community who do not yet follow Christ. We will be praying for God to wake them from their spiritual slumber. We will pray that God moves in the lives of his people and to awaken and draw them to himself. Let's seek God in hope that many will come alive in Christ at the same time. In earlier generations, the great spiritual awakenings were sought by God's people in persistent united prayer. And it says we will pray for the countries in Asia and the Pacific this week. So let's remember that as we close. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he guide you and give you peace in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray for Danny this week that you would touch him in the name of Jesus. I pray for the countries of Asia and the Pacific, God, that you would touch them. And I pray for our community that you would awaken them out of the spiritual slumber. And God, even wake the church out of the spiritual slumber. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.